minimizing charisma, maximizing intelligence, shooting someone in the crotch with a cannonball, thrust, propulsion, it's sciency. <laughs> Why you always gotta be blowing my spot up like that? There are my runes. There they are. I'm not mad. Science needs art and art needs science. They both need each other to function properly. There are ways to figure out what the paper is really saying. And then I'm ready to get on Twitter and yell at people about doing their own research on oh! Oh, oh, hold on there, sports fan. Kyle Hill, everybody, is the next generation of science communicator. I'm going to be too old at a certain point to do those terrible things to my body, and it'll be up to you. He's got like a lion's This guy's amazing. <laughs> Kyle Hill. I'm Boo Rambo. The universe is indifferent to you. Whether or not you have amazing hair, the universe doesn't care. How are trees pushing past this pressure limit? Ah! Behold, my balls. Ah! Now we're getting somewhere, but I still don't think it's worthy of G.R.R. Martin's suspender. I'm totally right, right? Oops up photos of my my frickin' hair? Is that what you all want? No, you don't, weirdos. Kyle Hill. Is your last name actually Hemsworth? What's going on? Our, our resident Thor lookalike. I prefer uh, Black Friday Chris Hemsworth. Oh, thank you. Hey, you know, if you need a haircut. No, of course not. We're not gonna send sharks with frickin' laser beams on their heads to an asteroid. We're gonna nuke. You don't need Bruce Willis at all. <laughs> Wrenched. Oh! oh! Headshot! Oh! Kevin, turn on the monitor. Kevin, this- Oh, hey. Yeah. Hey. Bezos, buddy. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah, no, I just got your package. <laughs> what, you want me to open it? Possibly in front of people on camera? <laughs> Alright, let me just check what this thing is, huh? Jeffy boy, you shouldn't have. Yeah. No, they look great. And they'll keep my eyes safe from blue light, even though that's kind of a scam that the computer industry has sold to us using sciency words. Yeah, no. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I'll make sure to to get everyone to buy them, even though the, the whole blue light thing isn't really a... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we can sell enough integrated product to send you to a, to the moon again on another penis rocket. What's that? Oh, wait, this is Jeff Beanzos? You sell tacos? Oh, um, carne asada, I guess. Thanks for the glasses. Love you. Chat. I'll wait till the music kicks in. Turn on the... Do the next track. Go to the... Chat. Welcome to another Scientist Plays. I'm your host, Kyle Mann. We are here today to jump once again back into Fallout 4. Due to the success of the show, how much I like it, how much people are liking it, how much people are playing this game again, I think it's a perfect opportunity for us to live, laugh, and learn together. If you want to talk about the show, no spoilers, even though there's like no major spoilers, I'd say, in the, in the show. This is a Zeitgeist stream indeed. But inside this Zeitgeist stream has no pants. You will learn, okay? Because our goal today is not just to play through some of our favorite games. It is to science the crap out of them. 
Last time we played this game, it was one of our most sciencey excursions ever. But I'm sure there are things that we missed. We'll be doing a playthrough kind of like Lucy would play through. So bring your questions. I'm sure we'll have new contexts for all of our things. But what is a rad? <laughs> Excellent question. Has no pants, our day job here at La Facilidad, in which I'm currently sitting, is to explore, explain, educate, and entertain. Everything underneath the stars and beyond. Yes, that includes Alpha Centauri. Here it is our mission, nay, our goal. To get as much education as we can out of our favorite games. Let me just give you a little taste. Has no pants. What is a red? A red is an outdated unit of radiation, of ionizing radiation. We're not really concerned with non-ionizing radiation like would come from your screen right now, pumping into your eyeballs, coming out of your phone, your microwave. It's non-ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation is the kind of radiation that can do damage to your cells, the DNA of your cells, cause mutations, possibly cancer. That's what we were. Uh, that's what we worry about. Rad is an outdated unit. We now use units like sieverts and grays because rad um, was not a direct measure of effect on human tissue, and so now we use units that tell us more about what a radiation dose would do to the human body. As to science time. Eileen Kenny Breen gifting the five gaming memberships. Aaliyah finally getting a membership. Thank you so much, Eileen, of course. You don't need to do that, but when you do, I appreciate it very much. Thanks for being here, Eileen, as always. Um, but how much rad is bad? You may, you may be saying, science time. Um, about a hundred, did it? Did a cat hair just flow, fly, fly past the camera? Or am I going crazy? Anyway, um, about 100 rad is bad. 100 rad will kill you. No, 1,000 rad will kill you. There we go. <laughs> about 1,000 rad will kill you um, because the conversion factor, basically from a health physics perspective, is two orders of magnitude from rads back to sieverts and grays. So about 10 sieverts or 10 grays is LD99 or is lethal for 99% of the population that will get that dose. And about 100 times more than one sievert. You know, you, you, I'm reading the chat. I'm looking at all, all the members here. You see what I'm saying? It's an order. Of, it's two orders of magnitude or 100 to convert between rads and sieverts and grays. So 10 sieverts would be 1,000 rads. And guess what? That's almost exactly what it is in the Fallout game. That's what we, uh, that's what we discovered in game when we're looking at our radiation meter and seeing how much rads just kills you. It's actually at a lethal dose of sieverts and grace. If you're wondering, yes, these are official Fallout gunner gamer, gla gunner gamer glasses. And we do all our gunner gaming glassing course here at the gaming wing of the facility. So here we are, of course, inside the gaming wing. Got 275 inch monitors above me to see what all my professors and members are saying. That's patreon.com slash Kyle Hill to join the facility today to get on our main channel see videos early, private, members only live streams with me. And of course, the other screen is for, for what we're playing today. <laughs> oh, nope. That is, those are Curie photos for Papa time. Whoa. That is, that was, uh, that may have been a mistake on my part. We're playing Fallout today. 
Fallout 4, Fallout 4, we're playing on Ultra Settings. I tried to make a character look kind of like Lucy, that is to say, very pretty. And we will be playing today from her perspective. A new perspective, trying to get many more science times. Ravenous Aardvark, Aardvark, thanks for being here. Falling out of that suit a little bit. Ooh, indeed. Of course, I'll be playing on my two 27-inch curved OLED monitors in front of me. 4K split right down the middle. Two actual images because I see in 6D. It helps with the booba. So like I said, chat, our goal today is to yearn and learn and maybe earn your appreciation, your membership to the facility. Can I ask a scientific question here? Yes, of course. That's what this entire stream is about, Baxter. Look at look at how tussled my hair is. Look at how, look how playfully tussled my hair is. But as you get to that question, Baxter, I only have one thing to say to you. And that is, welcome to a scientist place Fallout 4. Resident Australian here, checking in, ready to be outraged by accents, says Ravenous Aardvark. How dare you? You know that my Australian is my best accent. Gabriel Gumares Nogueira. Hey, Kyle, first time getting the stream. Love the Half-Life series. Appreciate it, brother. Jared Robinson, welcome. So you can see we're already at two science times. Can you even believe it? I can't. I can't even believe it. Chat, as we play through, I want to know, um, of course, if everything's looking okay, sounding okay, we're already up to two science times. That's what we're prioritizing. We're also prioritizing our Australian accents, if you want. Can you teach me how to calculate stuff so I can build a mini nuclear power generator for free energy and for the lulls? Um, there's no such thing as free energy. When we say free energy or something like that in the context of nuclear energy are usually talking about fusion energy and fusion energy yields so much energy from the direct conversion of matter into energy that it's basically free but it's not actually free which it which is just which is to say it's not thermodynamically free there's no thermodynamic free lunch in the universe this is lucy jawline Strong jawline, bangs, big eyes. That's what we went for. Um, but yeah, so free energy means negligible cost. Um, but there's no free energy in the universe. That's why perpetual motion, perpetual motion devices are impossible. Yada yada yada. Um, but can I teach you how to make one of those? No. Long time since I got to see you live. Thanks for everything you do for science communication. Says Luciano Goyce. Have the Kevins make a whole chat window just for you. Isn't that nice? Wolfgang Lamadeus Goatsart. <laughs> hey Kyle, love your videos. You're one of the best science communicators I've seen on YouTube. Come on, that can't be true. Vsauce exists. Is everything, um, everything looking good, sounding okay? I had to bump down the refresh rate on my monitor or else all the dialogue plays over it, over each other, which is weird. Finally catching my first live stream. Love your content. Keep up the science, you scienceman. Good morning, vault calling. Good morning. Isn't it? Okay, she's a Just she's she doesn't look out there. she doesn't look great, Chet. Okay, she doesn't look Chet. She doesn't look great. All right. You know. Does that save when I do that? 
You can't begin to know how happy I am to finally speak with you. I've been trying for days. Oh, you have a gaming it's channel a as well. You gosh darn tootin'. Urgency, I assure you. Kyle, this is from 10 years ago. Make some allowances. I tried. Look how pretty she is. Look how pretty we are today. I'm here now. So you are. So you are. Now I know you're a busy woman, so I won't take up much of your time. Time being, um... Mm, precious, precious these, these days. Oh, I nailed it. I'm here today. Athos to Kronos, one of our most generous members. Hey, Kyle, sorry I've been absent country. the last few weeks, but you I'm here now for that science of goodness. Thank you, Athos. Into the Always too generous. Vault. vault 111. Okay. Sounds great. Oh, it is. Okay, Believe so. You me. Now, Chet, why would you want to be. In the unforeseen event of. Uh, <laughs> Total new annihilation. Oh, I was close. I just need to verify some information. That's all. Okay. Sure. Now, Chet. Let's do it. Splendid. Splendid. Why would you want to be in a... Now, uh, let's see. I'm talking. Why would you want to be in a vault in the first place? I mean, it seems like a obvious question uh, with an obvious answer, but why would you want to be in a vault in the first place? Two reasons, right? Um, one being resistance to damage and annihilation. So when you have like blast doors and a bunker, that is prevent that is that is trying to harden your structure against pressure waves, which is to say blast waves, which is to say um, sound waves above 194 decibels, at which it's basically one atmosphere of sound which becomes like a blast wave. Um, so you want to harden structures against that. And then also the radiation, right? But when you see these vaults, you get this sense that they are very, very, very far underground. And you'll see that in a, in a little bit. Um, but if you're talking about radiation protection, you don't actually need something that far underground. Um, for the Frisian products, the, for the fission products that you're worried about, uh, for the fission products you're worried about, like cesium-137, etc., it doesn't penetrate all that far into steel, concrete, and dirt. No matter how many times I see it, your locks pit even gold itself, put even gold itself to shame. So how do you do it, Kyle? Says Niji Knight with the five uh, genetics. Um, and a hairdresser. So you don't need to be a hundred feet underground to protect yourself from radiation after nuclear blast. In fact, I have a, somewhere in, in the facility here, I have a nuclear war training manual updated for the most recent conflict going on in Ukraine um, that gives detailed instructions on how to build your own makeshift fallout shelter in just a couple of hours. And you don't need to be that far underground. We're talking like a foot or two. Um, I heard a meter of lead and 10 meters of concrete. No, that'd be, that's, that's way too much. Um, it's not, again, it's not too much in terms of preventing blast damage and other like kinetic impactors and stuff and just a fireball. But in terms of radiation protection, you'd only need, you only need a few inches of dirt to protect yourself from the radiation coming out of cesium-137 or something like that. Cy Mick, welcome. Longtime fan of your work, prove it. Um, how long should you stay sheltered after a nuclear blast to be safe, says Mark Lewis. Chat, we're never even gonna get to the gameplay if we do this. Um, look at Lucy, look how pretty she is. Um, so it depends on who you are how long you should stay sheltered after a nuclear blast is safe safe because what safe is depends on who you are and what you're doing. Um, if you are medical personnel, if you're military personnel, or if you're civilian personnel, they have, they all have different limits or proposed limits for what you can endure or what you can go out in. So say if you're military personnel, um, if you need to continue to fight after a nuclear weapon, then you are allowed to go into hotter areas than would be recommended for the general public. Same if you were a doctor or something like that. Um, 
But generally speaking, and I've watched some videos from the military on this, um, Mahmoud Glacier with the five. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I watched some military training videos on this, and um, the majority... Oops, don't look at that. The majority... <laughs> That's just for me. The majority of radiation after a nuclear blast would dissipate down to relatively safe levels after like two weeks, aside from right at the epicenter of the blast. Um, so yeah, so, so to ha the fallout after a nuclear explosion, after a nuclear explosion, the area that you can move in and around is larger than you think sooner than you think. But again, we're talking about from like a military perspective. Kyle, dumb question. This is Alex Delib with the 999. The son Neil deGrasse Tyson talk on a show. The longer time it takes to gain telescopes, x-rays, etc., the more info about the universe we lose access to. Um, no? Well, yeah, so... So what... Um, Dr. Tyson is talking about is that we seem to be in a good, we happen to be in a good age of the universe to do astronomy. Um, you know, if, if our civilization happened much later with, um, science time, with um, the expansion of the universe ever increasing, there is some, so some far future time where humanity could be looking out at the stars and see nothing. Everything got too far away. So we just happen to be in this medium time after the Big Bang, but before, you know, noticeable to human eyes, accelerated expansion of the universe. Um, we happen to be in this time where it's good to do astronomy. But yes, the longer it takes to get technology, the more we would lose out on data from the universe because the, the universe is escaping from us it's moving away from us faster than the speed of light at its edges hey Kyle just got home from work so this stream is a welcome way to relax happy to have you here liquid drums I'm, I'm kind of like tripping over my words and stuff like that last couple days have been kind of rough for me so if I'm so if I'm incoherent today too bad uh six science times already chat Okay, what is Lucy? Lucy, so last time we played this game, we went full intelligence, no charisma because we're scientists, right? Does iodine medicine help with radiation? Yes, but only, uh, Mr. Bigfoot, but um, only certain kinds of radiation. So why do you take iodine medication after a nuclear disaster? Or why have some people wanted to do that? They did. Sh did they show our stats, Janik? On all of these? You're going to have to tell me. Um, no, we'll get back to Batman, Cerberus. Uh, become algorithmically incoherent as Coinwasher. Exactly. I'm still worried about it. So, Mr. Bigfoot, um, iodine radiation is used if there's radioactive iodine in the contamination. Um, so, if you have radioactive iodine contaminating an environment or a population or milk or water supply or something like that, you take iodine so that your thyroid doesn't need iodine. Because chemically, your thyroid doesn't distinguish between the radioactive and the non-radioactive iodine. So what you're doing is basically filling up your body's need for iodine such that if you encounter any radioactive iodine, it doesn't get taken up in your thyroid, stay there, and then irradiate your throat and your neck and your face and your heart. Um, yeah, chat bans links, uh, just to be safe, Simic, sorry. Can you, uh, can you just type it out? Because that'd be kind of fun. It was great hearing you on Titans of Nuclear today, says Joe Dinkowitz. Hey, that's hey, that's interesting. I'm <laughs> I'm surprised you actually heard of that. Yeah, chat. If you want to, Chompy's got it. 
Chris Roberts, according to Nerdist. Nerdist, who's that? Um, thanks for everyone putting it in the chat. Uh, what the heck was I saying? Oh, yeah. So uh, if you want to listen to me talk about science communication and specifically science communication in the nuclear space, um, I was on the Titans of Nuclear podcast. You can search for that. Find it wherever good podcasts are sold and distributed. Um, if you want to hear me, I talk like for over an hour and a half about the nuclear industry and talking about nuclear stuff. And if you want to hear me, apparently it's a very large nuclear podcast. Uh, strength. I, I might not have enough points, chat, because I don't know if they actually went in the game. Strength four, perception, set, because I don't know if they used 21 points. You know what I mean? Because these are some really good stats. Endurance six, charisma five. Yeah, see, I'm not going to have enough points at all, but we'll get there. Intelligence six. Okay, so we're not going to get there yet, but we're going to try to. So that's what I thought. Um, we're going to try to get there. eventually with our point distribution. So I'm going to take one, two, three. I'm going to go one, two, three. Um, and then we, because nothing's lower than three, correct? Correct. Um, intelligence and charisma. So we, we'll, we'll build up our stats as we go. Okay. I think I have to do my name. Is that, what, that what's going on here? Yeah. I wonder if... I wonder if Codsworth has Lucy as a name in there. Because that'd be cool. I would like that. Because then he'll just say it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. That's everything. i uh, just going to walk this over to the vault. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. Um... Thanks again. Shock Tay with the 10. Sir Kyle, here the golden That's locks and handsome beard. Do tell. No price. What is this high. news of that we'll see a supernova <laughs> soon? Answer. I have my moments. Well, I think in a in a galaxy the size of ours, supernova happens fairly regularly. This one, I guess, just happens to be close enough to see or in the right area to see. I don't know. I haven't looked anything ahead, up honey. about it. I'll be there in a second to help, okay? Someone asked about career advice for a young scientist, science educator. Find your niche, find your voice, and make it your own. My boy isn't giving his mother any trouble, is he? Hey, I fixed that mobile on his crib the other day. Is it going to be like the moon? No, no, no. No, if a supernova was that close, uh, that'd be bad. Get out of my way. It's a Nova, not a Supernova. There are no That's normal Novas. On his best behavior, just like his dad. Well, most of the time, anyway. Listen, after breakfast, I was thinking we could head to the park for a bit. Weather should hold up. <laughs> I have to go to Halloween. Let's get pumpkins instead. Carve jack-o'-lanterns. Sir? Mom? You should come and see this. Codsworth? What's wrong? Kyle is the mom I wish I had. Jeez. So right now... By, yes, oh, wait. Followed by flashes, blinding flashes. Oh, the buttons are correct. Sounds that's good. Explosions. We're uh, trying to get confirmation. So that's one thing. Let's talk about the one thing in the show for a second. So when you see the blinding flashes at the very beginning of the first episode of Fallout, that's... It's the blinding flash that's indicative of, of what's going on. Um, early military personnel, and I say early, military personnel and early um, weapons testing recall the flashes from nuclear detonations being so bright that if they held up their hand and tried to block out the light, they could see the bones and the veins in their hand. Um, so we're talking about very, very bright light. Uh, light bright enough to blind you, to set things on fire. Um, if you're looking directly at it, it is very bad. I have a question. Considering it's been about 200 years in Fallout lore and there's no real health care, why aren't more people suffering from tinnitus or bacterial infection? Um, because that's boring. 
That's from the Castle Bravo test. There's many tests where people said that the, uh, that, that was the case. Seem to have what? lost contact with what our affiliate stations. Oh, no. We do, we do have, we do have coming in. That's, um, confirmed reports. I repeat, confirmed reports of nuclear detonations in New York and Pennsylvania. My God. We need to get to the vault. Now! I've got Sean. Let's go. Residence of Sanctuary. Residence. If you are registered, Is it as bright as the eclipse? No. Again, I, I haven't looked at the supernova thing at all, but it's it's gonna be a point of light in the sky. It's not gonna be some it's <laughs> it's not gonna be like the eclipse, no. Run! Run like lightning! You're in the vault program! Head to the gate! That's absurd! I am Not on the list. Tech. You don't get I'm in. I'm going in. You can't show me! Oh, 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 oh! Okay, okay! I'm reporting this! If you're in the program, step forward! Other... We need to get in. We're on the Mick, list. Mick, greetings from Ukraine. Greetings. Infant. Slava. Adult male. Adult female. We're not okay, in the vault go ahead. program. Thank you. Good luck, guys, sir. Gonna die. Thank God help us all. You can't decide you who has better hair, Matt from Space Time or Kyle. It's a close race. <laughs> no, it's <Now> not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> come on. Uh, come on. That was the ghoul pre ghouling. Uh, so yeah, that. So the ghoul from the TV show this isn't way. is not that guy. Um, they're two different guys. But similar kind of look and feel. So, what you should know about the show is that everything in the games happens before the show, the Amazon show, takes place. So, every Fallout game is canon, and the show happens a couple years after New Vegas, I think. Step on the platform! In the center! Ma'am, we need to send you down to the vault! Step on the platform! Almost there. Is Sean nice shades, okay? Kyle. Thank He's you, Butterbud. We're gonna be okay. I mean, doesn't the show take place over in Nevada anyway? No, it takes place in California. Um, I heard the show is at least 20 years after all the games. Yes. Something like that. Nine years after four. Got it. Since the vaults are sealed in Fallout, wouldn't oxygen supply become an issue without some kind of oxygen supply tank? Says Niji Knight. No, not necessarily, Science Time. You can have uh, rudimentary... Um, well, so, so an advanced vault like this would have some sort of air scrubbers. Um, and, uh, dust suppression, decontamination for the air, filters for the air. Um, because I, this is what I found when I went to, when I told people that I was going to Chernobyl is that they don't, the public doesn't really have an idea of what being contaminated actually means. Um, being, and I'm writing about this right now uh, for, an, for another Fallout episode, because why not? Viewbies. Um, why is it so silent? Because it's paused. That's not... Is the baby dead? No. You'll find out. Um, anyway, what it means to be contaminated by nuclear material is having actual nuclear material on you or in you. And so the only way for you to be contaminate oh there's hair in my mouth contaminate ah oh, inside of a vault from like the air outside is that if there are particles in the air or dust that fission products have clung to that is clinging to that done be clung to and then you inhale that so if you have adequate dust suppression and filters you could filter the air from the surface um it wouldn't be like you need um a steady supply of air now, have, now, getting radioactive particles out of the water, that's a different thing and could be much harder to do. Um, because, again, in my nuclear war training manual, uh, there are instructions for rudimentary air filtering and stuff like that. You, you can have a mechanical fan to pump in air and uh, 
to to move air in and out of your rudimentary shelter. So even if you are near ground zero, air supply is not going to be as bad as, as you think it is. Um, I love you. Oh my God! See, now we were all looking at it and you heard the explosion immediately. Um, so... So you wouldn't hear it that fast. You wouldn't hear the sound that fast. You would see it would it would happen th at the same time that the blast wave got to you because that's what science time. That's what sound is. It's a wave moving. It's a wave it. moving through the air. We made it. Right. We're okay. Everyone, please step off the elevator and proceed up the stairs in an orderly fashion. No need to worry, folks. I tried the thumb thing, then it, and it didn't work. Says home. Hugh. Yeah, wasn't Hugh? <laughs> wasn't it weird that future, so that thumb a better future so underground? I can't believe it. Wasn't it we weird? A minute later. No, no. We'd all don't be. get caught up thinking about that. You're safe now. I uh, I wrote on, that Fallout Thumb episode months and ago, and it just happened to be important to the first five minutes of the TV show. I was blown away, literally and figuratively. Any nuclear materials hitting with that shockwave? No. So ostensibly these are radiation detectors as well. So what it would be, what these, what these nerds right here would be looking for, what these nudes, nudes, man, I'm not doing so good. Um, what these nerds would be looking for here is a mission from your body indicating some kind of surface or internal contamination. So gamma rays coming out of your body, hitting these things, indicating that you are contaminated. Uh, Shock Day, thank you again for the 10. Yeah, the little girl in the episode one of the show looking directly at the explosion, slightly problematic. How much in advance do you, how much in advance do you re usually each of you take one of these, your brand new vault suits. How much in advance do you usually write a video? Depends on the video, Simic. It's down Thanks. the hallway right there. What now? Just follow the doctor here. He'll show you if, where to uh, go. All right, you sometimes I, I write more me. evergreen videos that could be months out, but sometimes See. like this, if so the Fallout episode did very well because it happened to be oh, in the first five about. minutes of the show. This is um, one of our most advanced facilities. So I can write the others aren't great, mind you. something. The, the quickest I can get something out is about two weeks. You're doing great, Kyle. Uh, changing a lot of medications around. What if the little girl had worn her eclipse glasses? Well, that would have been better. Just checking everyone off the list. Chad, why is it bad to look at the sun during an eclipse? It doesn't make it. it the eclipse doesn't make the sun worse for your eyes. Science time. Looking at a uh, an eclipse is a attractive nuisance. What we'd call an attractive nuisance or an attractive hazard. And so the eclipse. The eclipse. Oh my god. The eclipse makes it more likely that more people will look at the sun for longer. Um, and what is your eye? Your eye is a small hole with a magnifying glass in it. Your lens, the lens of your eye, is a hard piece of material that is a convex lens, and it focuses light. Um, and so by staring at the sun, you're you're basically like taking a magnifying glass to the back of your eye, to your retina, like you would burn an ant or something. Um, that's why you don't want to stare at it. It doesn't make it more dangerous just because it's the, the eclipse. It just makes it more likely that more people will stare at it. You know what I mean? They come in. Fashionable as well as comfortable. Prepared for the future, right? Such a lovely family you have. You'll see this as your new home. 
Let me in. I want to be froze. And put your vault suit on. It'll be. What if there's ants in your brain? Well, then you're probably dead. Can follow material be collected and recycled? Before we head deeper. Not as far as I know. When you're talking, when you're talking about Fallout, it's literally like microscopic particles and atoms that uh, coalesce around or conglomerate around stuff in the atmosphere, much like rain or snow does in the atmosphere. And then it gets so heavy in the atmosphere, it falls out, much like rain does. Um, so to separate all of that back out into dust and specks of vaporized dirt and babies um, and nuclear material would be, if not impossible, practically impossible. Um, so contaminated material is just collected, quarantined, and stored. Um, and the easy solution would be just to bury it in a deep mine somewhere, but we don't have the political uh, or public will to do that. Relax. Time for a whole new life. Resident secure. Hey. Occupant vitals normal. Procedure. Complete. My thumbstick is. My thumbstick's weird. In. In the show, they have portable fission batteries. Uh, actually, they're fusion batteries, Buddha. But somehow they have an energy crisis? No, they don't. In the show, there's a water... They mention not having enough water and enough food at one point. But in the alternate future of Fallout, um, energy is negligibly, negligibly easy to generate. Freezing generally kills us, right, Kyle? If you freeze all the way through, if your metabolism stops, if your brain stops, you're dead. Cryogenics isn't a thing. It's a scam sold to rich people. That's not to say that there isn't a way to slow people's metabolism or to extend lifespans, but if you freeze all the way through such that you are a popsicle and no more chemical things are happening in your body, you're dead. Raymond with the five. Loved your thumb video. Do you ever get scared of nuclear war? Um, yes. I'm scared. I'm scared of three things. And one is nuclear war. What's the other one? Carnies. Small hands smell like cabbage. No, um, we've been, we've been uh, under the shadow of the nuclear bomb for like 75 years now. And you don't know how many times we've, come so close to annihilating everything and everyone. Um, I'd put nuclear annihilation as my number one worry, um, existentially. And then probably it's a toss up between synthetic pandemics and artificial intelligence. Um, but yeah. So I know it's weird that I'm pro nuclear power, but very anti nuclear weapons. But once you, understand the two technologies they are very different and you don't need one to have the other um but yeah nuclear war terrifies me I, I routinely have stress nightmares where i get irradiated and i lose all my hair and i say and i know that sounds egotistical or something but it's just something my brain does and i lose all my hair and you know the world gets annihilated <laughs> anyway i got Kellogg wishes he had my hair. That's why he's about to do what he's about to do. Um, even the first bomb they thought might destroy the world. Yes, and I have a video on that if you want to check it out on the main Chan Chan. How close are we to nuclear fusion? Not close. We, uh, we're we like two steps there. We, we've proven that we can initiate a nuclear fusion reaction and that we can get energy out of it. We just need to get more energy out of it, a lot more energy out of it to make it uh, practically feasible as an energy source like fission is. Um, Chad, we're not even 10 minutes into the game, and we're already 16, so, let me check, 16 sign times in, ha 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 Don't humans have their own small magnetic field? That's why touching the antenna of an old radio or putting your key fob up to your head affects them, right? Says Nietzsche Knight. No, that's incorrect. Um, 
atoms have their own small magnetic field. Yes, that's what lines up and creates magnets in the first place. Science time. But um, what extends the range of your key fob, which we also have a video on, on the main Chan Chan. Um, Chandler, of course, Benny in New Vegas. Um, what extends the range of your key fob is the resonance of your brain matter being, uh, because your brain is about the right size chamber to create resonance of that frequency, the frequency of your key fob. <sighs> Sir Kyle! It's a shock day with the 10. We know you will be a handsome bastard of ghoul and still teach. Oh my God. Shock day, you have to stop misspelling things. I feel like I'm doing even worse than I'm doing. And still teaching lost folks of the wasteland the ways of science. I want to be irradiated and live 200 years. Uh, I have bad news. Here for the science time says Santiago. Santiago. Bienvenido, Santiago. Ow, my body. Are those blue light blocking glasses? These are the official Vault Tech 133 Fallout Gunner glasses. Yes. The power over magnetism like Magneto, can you just turn off a brain? Well, the, the brain isn't a, a magnetic, it's not a um, electrical engine, no. But I know what you're saying. I mean, if Magneto had complete control at every scale of magnetism, then he's basically God. Are you able to put subtitles on? Yep, I forgot. My bad. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Um, so as you can see, as we go through our new playthrough of Fallout, we do have some donation centies where we can, we, if we meet them over time in succession, we will chain, we will run polls in the chat to change uh, to whatever faction you want, whatever companion you want, and I know it's a big amount, but we might do a number of these streams and I'll keep the goal running. If we get enough and you really want me to, I will try a new game plus on survival mode. I really don't want to do it. It's so brutal. You get three saves and that's it and the enemies are harder, and you get poisoned, and you have to eat and drink and sleep, and you get diseases and, and crap. I don't want to do that. Catnip Dave, scratching post. Then why'd you put it there? As an incentive. Catnip Dave, scratching post, says my uncle was in charge of a missile silo between from the Korean War to a redacted time, and I can say there have been at least five incidents where we were close before the 80s of this. Okay, I feel like I feel like I'm having a stroke, but that was kind of weirdly written. Um, but that's incredible. First of all, thank you uh, to your uncle for his service. And yeah, there have been many close calls that we now know of and probably many more close calls that we don't know of where we got close to nuclear war. My uncle works at Nintendo, says Santiago. Cool. Ow, my frozen hands. Do you know how long it would take a human body to thaw out? Like, what is it like? We're just letting it thaw out. Chat in space because, science time, because in space no one can hear you cream, but also because in space the only way to lose heat is through the least efficient way of losing heat, which is radiating heat. Um, a human, a, a, Lucy, L Lucy, a human body might take more than like 48 hours to a couple of days to freeze all the way through. Give me all your stuff. I have to get used to the sensitivity of these controls. What have I been, what have I been playing? Just joined. Are we in the, are we starting? I thought we would be out of the vault by now, says Connects, Connects Master. No, we're just been annihilating science times, as you can see above me, but I can't see it that well because I'm wearing official Fallout Gunner blue blockers. Been wanting to play Fallout 4 again after the show, but this is much better, says VR Daddy. Thanks, Daddy. Thanks for being here. I feel like my brain right now, I've been trying to get it back on track, but I'm barely, I feel like I'm barely holding it together right now. I am barely hold, 
being able to speak right now. Not doing so hot. Extermination is everyone's job, says propaganda. Give me this stuff. Give me, give me. I need all the stuff I can need. Can you actually freeze people if you don't damage the cell structure, says New Alien. Yeah, yeah, you can freeze people. Flash freezing is using cryogenic fluid, you know, that's like negative 180 degrees C or whatever it is, um, to freeze stuff faster than the water mo molecules that want to create ice spikes do. Are you okay? What's wrong, Kyle? I don't know. I'm not doing so hot. Um, maybe I'm dying. Anyway, um, what did you say? Oh yeah, so freezer burn happens when things freeze. When th what things, Shh, Lucy, yeah, sit down. Thanks. That's what I wanted you to do. Uh, Matt Barry is the official voice in all Fallout propaganda. It was so great that Matt Barry is in the show. He's my favorite British person. Um, of all the adapted TV video game shows, TV to video game shows, Fallout has been the most accurate and well done, says Avitas. I would agree. I would say that Fallout is the best one that has done a new story. Um, the Last of Us is better in terms of retelling a famous story. So Fallout could have, like, done New Vegas or the Fallout 4 sto story, but it would be, it wouldn't work because everybody's story in these RPGs is different. Um, but in terms of the quality and the acting and, and, and everything like that, for The Last of Us, it's impeccable. Um, but for Fallout, to take the chance to have a brand new story in a 25-year-old game series and then do all the fan service and nail the casting and stuff, it's great. It's really, really, really good. It's a good game. Show. It's a good show and game. I'm gonna eat that meat. No bark, no man. My dad worked at the Sandia Nuclear Laboratory for several years and had me some top and had some top secret level clearances. Some really cool stuff. He worked on nuclear fusion stuff. Uh, no bark. Have you seen the our merch at shop.kylehill.net? I took some of the Sandia nuclear lab stuff and turned it into merchandise that you can buy. He might really like it. Yeah, you know, I know, I, you know, I know I'm selling you something, but you might actually like it. <laughs> stay, stay back. I'm just a biologist, please. Somebody, please get this man a gun. Hey Kyle, did you know that if you press mouse one button, you can attack? I'm playing on controller. They are cool designs though. Yeah, of course, Chompy. I sell, we, ugh. great marketing, Chompy. Terminal's gotta be somewhere. You will like the designs, whether or not you know what they're saying, because they're metal. They're all nuclear waste warning sign inspired. Actually, speaking of which, I will be filming well, I'll be shooting the assets for a new merchandise drop based off of the nuclear waste warning, warning suggested by Sandia National Laboratories. And we'll have a new merchandise drop in the, probably this month or in the next two weeks, three weeks. Walton Goggins has never touched a video game. Doesn't surprise me. He's an actor but he's a very good actor. You play using controller, you're literally a nerd. Yeah, what gave it away? Yeah, go check it out, No Bark. Um, Shop.kylehill.net. I think he'll like it. <laughs> hey, it's just like in the TV show. Ow. She even kind of sounds like her. If you're wondering who this voice actress is, this voice actress is the same voice actress who plays, uh, uh, hot tattooed lady from Mass Effect, Jack. There we go. 
I just realized how many people are watching might be the highest number that I've seen here, says via the heathen. heathen. That's why we're doing it. To take advantage of a cultural moment. We're taking advantage of a cultural moment for, for views. But also, hopefully I'm being legitimately entertaining, even though I feel like I'm having a stroke. Um, so chat, if you've learned anything today, if you're new here, either or and or both and twice, spam your favorite emoji right now, and I want all the members here to spam their favorite emoji of my face as well. If you learn anything, let me know if you're learning stuff, because while, yes, we're doing, I can't, sh I can't shoot, and <laughs> we're, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading chat. And we're doing this for the numbies. Education is why we're doing this today. That's what I want to do. Most people are not educated about nuclear stuff, especially Fallout and Fallout. Look at all these science people in there. Come on! Can you do a video on the physics of the Helldivers pods? As Nero, sur Nero survives. Next video on the main channel is about Helldivers. So yes, we're nothing if not trying to be timely. Yeah, the uh, controller moment. Yeah, no, my um, my sensitivity on my on my thumbies is all jacked up right now. Like, look how, like that's too fast. You know, that's way too fast. I gotta slow that down. Way too fast. Look sensitivity down. It's a little bit better. <laughs> so now, to everyone who's played the games, no, who's only seen the show, um, look at how many things are exactly as they are in the game. That's why, that's why so many fans are excited about the show, is because so many things are, as Adam Savage would say, dead to nuts, exactly the same. Shock Day, thank you for another 10. Thank you for your work talking about nuclear waste. You changed my mind on it because I could fact check everything. Mind you, folks think I'm a shill now too. Look, Shock Tay, if I was getting paid by the government to talk about nuclear waste, I would drive a better car than a Chevy Cruze from 2012. Yeah, the show is very, very close. I mean, I... Again, it's very ballsy to do a, a brand new story that incorporates all of the canon for 25 years worth of games. Um, but the fact that they did it and everyone likes it, it's because it's a great combination of appealing to the fans, taking the show, uh, taking the game seriously, and just nailing the, the, the look and the feel and the vibe. Hey Kyle, what do you think about the animals in the game and the show? I like the Yao Guai. I'm glad I found this channel today, says Damien. I'm glad you're here, buddy. How did you get yourself trapped in a zat in a pit boy, says Lunar Gladius with the Czar 14? What? Huh? huh? Oh yeah. How did this happen? Hmm. Can't believe you talked right through the vault opening sequence, says Atanius. Atanius, we've all seen it, okay. Okay, we've all seen it. The gulper was awful. It, it was awfully good. Um, the gulper... <sighs> the animation and stuff on the gulper was fantastic. It looks better... It looks better than uh, a lot of CG in, in big shows. The Act Man has done a great video about the Fallout show. Oh, you mean the guy who said that uh, Halo didn't need a BR? <laughs> I had a gripe about how prominent the ghoul's ears are. Well, you can only do so much to an actor's face. You know, um, you still want them to be able to act. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes, you could have made 
the Goganator look much more like a disgusting ghoul, but you also want to have him be able to actually move his face and emote and look like an actor, you know? So you have to make some... I don't know why nerds don't understand. See, when I do science communication and science consultation for pop culture stuff, what nerds don't seem to understand is that your job as a sciencey person is to be exactly as accurate as the narrative needs you to be and not take away from the narrative. The narrative and the story that the game or whatever is trying to tell is the most important part of that property. Then the director or the writer or whoever, or whoever can include things or not include them, but you don't want to take away from the narrative. And so, yes, you could have made the ghoul look a lot more ghoulish, sure, but actors gotta act. And he's doing a great job acting as the ghoul, Walton Goggins is. So th that is a, y you must understand that practical considerations and narrative considerations trump being, you know, completely screen accurate to a video game. You know what I mean? Press down to sprint, what? No. That's not, that's not what that keybind is. All right, so what do we do first? Oh, we gotta talk to Codsworth. Maybe he knows our name. I bet he will. I bet he will. Codsworth, you're still here. So other people could still be alive too. Well, of course I'm still here. Is Chad Surely completely covering her or are we good? <laughs> could deter the pride of General Atomics International. But you will see. He can't be dead. <laughs> she might be getting covered be. up. I'm in a dream. I'm in a bad dream. Why does she look like that? Have you seen her? She looks just like this. Oh, mom, these things you're saying. These she looks exactly like this. I, I yeah, these terrible things you're saying in New York City. This, this dire move. Yes. It's been ages since we've had a proper family activity. Checkers or, or perhaps charades. Mm -hmm. Chad, did you know that the actress... Ella, who plays Lucy, is a British woman. And she's the voice of Jinx in League of Legends. I mean, Arcane. She's got a very good English accent. Sean's been kidnapped. I'm gonna find him. Okay, we all know, we all know what's going on here, Chet. Let's, Doesn't let's advance into, been. let's ants, let's <laughs> advance into some shenaniganry. rotation and some minor dings to the old chronometer. <laughs> that means you're uh, two centuries late for dinner. <laughs> What's your favorite bot to make in Fallout? Oh, I'm not that into bot stuff. We have twice the normal number of people watching. That's because of the education and the fact that we're consciously taking advantage of a large cultural event. What? Food? Hope you're learning something, yeah, sure. all you newbies in the chat. I hope you're enjoying. I meant to think. My glasses. Yes. You are the hungriest bastard in all of New York City. Okay. So one of the most important things in this game, if you like to make stuff, which I do, that's not what that button does. Got it. Um, you gotta store your crap. You gotta store all your crap. Oh, wait, wait. I, uh... Wait, that's the button. Got it. Um, I'm gonna take off my wedding ring so people know that I'm single now. Okay, good. I don't want people to... I did add some uh, mods to this game. 
like some armor stuff so make it so that you can see all of the clothing that you actually wear. Hey, my nipples look like milk duds. What's up with that? Luis Gomez making a very old reference. So much science in this cultural event. Exactly. Let's talk to our robot. You added mods? Yeah, I figured it out. Miss Lucy, here you are, Mum. Oh, she's, he said Lucy, I've see? I've been thinking, if something is amiss, your loved ones may simply be hiding. Mm, okay. Mm. Codsworth, I don't think the Reds are going to be a problem anymore. Look, see, it looks just like the show now. Let's search the neighborhood Wimp Low. Together. Yeah, what is that? After all, Sir and Young Sean. <laughs> What's the name of that movie again? They're my family, too. Uh, Kung Pao, Enter the Fist. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I watched that movie so many times. Tell me if you see a radio shack. All right. Lead the way. Proud to serve, Mum. Apparently, mini black holes are a real thing, yes. What chance we can catch one and use it as a power source? Uh, negligible. Um, I have no idea how you would catch a black hole. What's all this crap? But what you would, um... Chad, I've been playing different games, so, uh... Forgive me if I... The controls are a little off. Or my, my controlling is a little off. What would be the hardest creature comfort to get rid of or to forget about in the wastes? Thank you for the five. Um, my bidet. Hey, Codsworth. Chat, chat, get a bidet. Oh, right. So, um, there is an idea to have a black hole engine. Um, and the black hole engine is a concept that uses Hawking radiation. The concept of Hawking radiation, one of the things uh, that made Stephen Hawking famous, scientifically speaking. What's VATS? Is it this button? Yes. Uh, and Hawking radiation is radiation emitted from a black hole over time, making it smaller and smaller. But what that also means is that the energy gets more and more intense, the energy output gets more and more intense as the black hole gets smaller. So it could get to a certain theoretical size, and if you were constantly feeding it in material, you could have a consistent output of energy. Now, if you have, you, you do the same thing you do in a nuclear power plant afterwards. You heat up some apparatus, use that to make steam, use that to make electricity or something like that. Or you could just use the, the radiation to directly heat up some um, eject mass or reaction mass, that's the word, um, and fling it out the back of a spaceship. But how do you capture a black hole and keep it confined? Um, is it a spinning black hole? Does it have a charge on the outside? Do you then have to confine it electromagnetically? I don't know. What do I look like? Look at me. Do I look like a scientist to you? Codsworth. Miss Lucy, sir and young Sean. Is it possible to use a, a Dyson sphere with cold fusion? I don't know what that means, says, uh, says Cyfox. Um, Sean's out there, Codsworth. Look, I look just like Lucy. Um, Dyson Sphere and Cold Fusion, two different things. Dyson Sphere is a theoretical megastructure that you'd put around a sun to harness the majority of the energy coming out of that sun. Cold Fusion is nuclear fusion done at a hot temperature. I know that sounds weird. But that's what it means. But, and by hot temperature, I mean... <laughs> so nuclear fusion in the sun or in a laboratory happens at millions and millions of degrees. Cold fusion is at a hot temperature for humans. So like room temperature. That's what cold temperature means. But those two things are distinct and different. I need to find him. Okay, Lucy. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your help. Let's Good do luck, it. Mom. You'll find young Sean. I know Man, you kind of look like a cool scientist. Oh, mm. uh. secure the home front, Matt Berry. Mm, yes, yes. Chat, if you've never seen Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, you never watched the IT crowd or what we do in the shadows, please do. 
Wouldn't put a Dyson Sphere around a star trap all the radiation? Yeah. Would cold fusion make more power than regular fusion? Uh, no. Depends on what you're using. If you're using the same fuel, you have the same reactions, you know? So cold fusion doesn't make ice? No. I'll clean up all this crap later. There's science to get to that is related to the show, which is why there's so many people watching. Bugs! <laughs> the, the aiming in this game is just spot on. <laughs> I'm trying to cook your friends into meat. Now, chat, when I cook rad roach meat like this, it removes the radiation from it. Um, but that cooking material would not remove the radiation from it. That's, um, those are different processes. As we talked about earlier in the streambow. Um, I think there's, I want to see, I added, I added a mod that gives you a little bit of a leg up if you do hardcore survival mode, and it's an extra little stash of stuff underneath your house. So I want to see if that, that actually loaded in. Because I loaded in some other stuff too, but we'll see. Those glasses are awesome, remind me of Tony Stark. Cool yet smart, says Damien. Damien, I'm now never going to take these off. Thank you. Isn't a Dyson Sphere to utilize the thermal energy of a star? Not just thermal, no. Um, so thermal is infrared radiation, but a star gives out ultraviolet radiation, a whole spectrum of radiation, and you'd want to harness all of it, or you could harness all of it, theoretically speaking. Ooh, charisma. I'm a pretty lady. Ella, what's her face in the show, is, is so gorgeous. The fact that some incels online needed to Photoshop any part of her. Excellent. It was a very quick and easy way to say, hey, internet, I've never seen a woman up close. What am I looking for? Oh, yeah. It's supposed to be like a vault or not a vault, like a little stash around here. That was part of the mod. But I don't know where. I've never played with mods before. Light is radiation. Yes, it's true. Um, it's like this, the same quote-unquote gamers are like, you can see graphics have gone too far. You can see peach fuzz on Aloy's face from Horizon Zero Dawn. It's like, hey, <laughs> never had a woman in my house. What am I looking for? Chad, I know this looks like I'm a crazy person, but I'm just, just give me one second. That woman, she has, she has skin, disgusting. By the way, have you seen my latest post on 4chan? It's for the lulls. All right, I don't know what I'm, I guess that didn't go through. I guess that's not my house. That is my house. No, that's my house. Wait, was I in the wrong house? No, that's my house. Cause that's where Cosworth is. That's where the baby crib was. Okay, I'm done. Juice head. It's probably the basement cellar behind one of the houses. Yeah, but I thought it was under my original house. What scientist has inspired you the most? This is Raymond K. Hessel. Um, lately, I've been a, a Richard Feynman fan, which is to say I like Dick, which is to say that the more I read him, hear him speak, learn about his life, um, he is simply a straight up genius, a, a legitimate, true genius. Um, and an expert science communicator, and we could all learn from him. Or I could learn from, I could learn a lot from him in terms of science communication. Where is this stash? Root cellar. Oh, you think they turned the, no the normal root cellar into the little stash thing? Yeah. I thought, it, I thought the mod said it was behind. Anyway, doesn't matter. Chat, as long as we're learning today. One of your old videos convinced me to play Horizon, and now it's one of my favorites, says D. Tori with the five. Horizon's fantastic. Horizon is a fantastic game. Both of the games are great. They're super science-y. They are gorgeous. Not many games look as good as Horizon does. The combat, super duper fun. 
Like I could I could fight those dinosaur robots forever. Did you grab the gun on top of the roof? What are you guys talking about? Dun, dun, dun. Perfect. What a gamer. There's a gun on the roof. Got it. Here we go. Gamer mode. Gamer mode active. Gamer mode. Act. Gamer mode activated. I'm not using mouse and keyboard chat. Gamer mode activated. Perfect. So you can see I'm on the roof. You just looked at the cellar. Oh, you mean this thing? So about creme. Yeah, I'll be going to get that that uh, that knife. So now, does this have all the stuff in it? No. Oh wait, does it? No. So no. So this this is a lot of good stuff, but the mod that I apparently installed but can't find um, has a lot more stuff in it than this. It's it's like it's supposed to be a way to give you a leg up when you are doing a uh, hardcore survival mode. Um, and this isn't it. Well, that's fine. I don't care. Look at me over here, not caring. Give me your, your aluminum. See right here, this wouldn't, that's, that's what I'm saying. A radiation proof cellar or proof, but wouldn't have to be much deeper or thicker than this. Daddy Dagath or Dagath. Thanks for being here. Seriously, last question. Raymond with the five. What recent result in terms of math or science has totally blew your mind? Uh, something I'm uh, I'm becoming more interested in is uh, gamer mode activate. Ga gamer mode activated. Lolly Lully Low nano machines. Before the World War II, after World War II, the world was split into two. No. <clears throat> after World War II, the world was split into two, east and west. It was the beginning of the Cold War. Gamer mode activated. Hey, there is a gun up here. Good job, whoever said that. Was that Deacon? Hudson River. Two years ago. No, I was doing snake. Chat, if you're new here, and many of you are, um, I do many screen accurate um, impressions. Of course, I keep doing that. Wait, store all junk. I did that. Oh, I, I, ch I changed like a scope setting and stuff like that. Um, I added some scarps to the game. Let's go get our puppy and keep going. It's supposed to be in my house. I'm gonna check again. <laughs> Because the other... Where are you going? What's your deal? Where are you going? Jeez. Like on the surface of the moon. Surface of the moon. <laughs> so I do many screen accurate. Um screen accurate impressions of course i can do an australian person um to use the sim settlements mod no but i could i could I, I saw that one on the list um golem of course uh meat wad which is basically just golem but weirder oh wait wait a second wait a second here it is. This is <laughs> so that's not fair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is a mod uh, that gives you a bunch of stuff in the beginning of the game if you are pl if you are playing on hardcore survival mode. Twenty gold bars, twenty silver bars, fatigues, nice bed, all the food and water that you could want early game. Uh, so this is supposed to help you out if you're doing the brutal survival mode. Guns, end of the line sniper rifle, side. Oh, and chat. There we go. I gotta take Lucy. 
I got it. Yeah. Limb mod. <laughs> Look at all that chameleon armor mod. Rounds, suppressors. Fuse. Fuse box. Chat, do you want me to start off with all this sick stuff? Or do you want me to play normally? I could go either way. I don't really care. Oh, and there's more stuff in here? Yeah. Stim packs. Shower. I could get nude. Uh, let's make sure we equip this. Yeah. Lolly Lule Low. Nano machines. That didn't work. Por que no? Stack it up. I vote normal and two new plus. Yeah, I agree. Take the stuff. Yeah. I, I kind of like uh, what everyone's saying there. Wait. What? Favorite. Go there. There we go. Yeah. I'm Lucy now. I'm Lucy with Lucy. I'm Lucy with Goosey, baby. Starts to run off faster. Better content, more views, more views, more science. Nah, it's fine. Nah, it's fine. Nah, it's fine. We're doing this for science chat. 23 science times already in an hour and a half. That's incredible. That's incredible. Always take a Lucy to a gunfight. I always do. All right. We know how to move. What if Lucy stabbed Lucy using Lucy? Well, then she's going to get goosey. Clearly. Get this house out of my face. It's ugly. We hate it. Thank you. You're making me look bad. Chad, I'm cosplaying as the HOA right now. Um, have you built any new commanders from Thunder Junction? Yes. I built... Uh, or the cards are coming in the mail currently for rocks and Starfall Savant. I'm excited about that. Don't make me shank you. Let's take these. Let's put on his clothes. Let's take off that. Let's strip this dog for its butt jerky. Let's put on this. Let's take that. Let's move that. Let's put on this. Let's move this here. Let's take this double barrel shoddy. Let's move that here. Let's let's do a quick this one. Let's put that down there. Let's move this up here. Let's check ourselves out. Loosey goosey, baby. What propulsion technology do you wish would have a sudden advancement? Um, science time. We're basically we're we are re for all you gamers out there. We are region locked in the inner solar system without a... F I'm going to shank this dog. Um, I'm not, oh. Chet. Without... Hey, boy. What are you doing out here all by yourself? You want to come with me? Son? I can't believe you meet a dog at the Red Rocket. Um, okay, then. Let's stick together. But there's mole rats that trigger after I meet you. And they pop up right here. Chat, we're... Uh, chat, we're region locked in the uh, inner solar system. Um, that's because we have nothing fast enough to get us outside or even to close planets or outside the solar system, rather, in anything like reasonable times or human lifetimes or reasonable mission times or anything like that. So we need better propulsion technology that will get us safely places faster. And that's hard because I don't know if you know this, but space is big. Where are we going for? I, I mean, do we go straight? Do we do we play this really that straight and go straight for Concord and get the power armor and do all the Preston Garby crap? Or do we get a little weird with it? You know? Rip and tear until the moments. <laughs> okay. Donde? 
Gotta use your Lucy. Good job. Gotta get Goosey. Gotta get Goosey. See, what I like about the legendary not. Whoop. What I like about. But that's a fusion something or other. Gimme. What I. Uh, what I like about knives in this game is their fast attack speed. Now, chat, you heard that clicky clicky sound. What is that clicky click? Ah! 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 What is that? What is that clicky clicky sound, chat? So, wh what is the actual clicky clicky sound? Oh, gee, Jesus. That was kind of like the show, too, huh? Uh, when you hear the clicky clicky sound, that's of a Geiger Mueller counter. Uh, Geiger Mueller counter, kind of like this. And my room is slightly radioactive, as is your room right now. Just a second. Just a second. Can you hear that? So my room is slightly radioactive. Um, and those clicks you're hearing are ionizing events or ionization events occurring in the detector of this detector and creating a voltage. And we translate, we transduce that change in voltage into an audio signal. So right now, inside of the facility here, we are quite shielded. Um, we're at 0 0.03 microsieverts per hour, plus or minus 70%. Uh, do microwaves produce radiation? Yes, but not ionizing radiation. Everyone hear that? So, uh, yeah, so that's what a Geiger-Muller counter does, or just a Geiger counter. This one that I like a lot because it has an app, and it's sleek, and it's easy to use. Um... And you can do multiple different things. You can, it has an app where you can track um, integrating with your smartphone's map. You can track rates over time. You can track your dosage over time. You can reset it. You can add alarms, all that stuff. Um, this one's from Radio Code. And uh, we will, we've actually uh, secured an advertisement with Radio Code. So if you've been looking to buy a Geiger counter and you want a nice one, these are really nice. If you've been looking to get one, just wait a couple weeks. Just wait. It is expensive, Shine, because they're expensive devices that detect radiation. Um, it's not exactly a toy. But but this is really use, uh, versatile. It's sexy. It's tiny, um, much smaller, and, uh, and uh, has a better hand feel <laughs> than other Geiger counters that I've brought to other places like Hiroshima and Chernobyl. Um, Anyway, we're doing an ad with them. So you've been look if you if you're looking to get a Geiger counter like this, a fancy one, um, just wait a couple weeks. We'll have a discount code for you. Look, all I can say is I only had a bobby pin. All I can say is you're welcome. That's all I can say. You're doing a bloody ad. Well, yeah. How do you think we pay for all these shotgun shells? Would it be possible for normal mutations that we see all on mole rats in such a short time frame? So it's Dave's cap snips ships the Yeah. So one thing that Kyle's gotta pay the bills, mate. Yeah. If you're learning, what's the problem? And if it's cool, what's the issue? You know what? I'm not gonna screw Preston Garvey. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off in a random direction. Just like Lucy would. Lucy doesn't know where to go. So we're gonna head towards, did I add a map mod? We're gonna head towards this farm up over here. Is that like an Abernathy farm? I think something like that. Like I said, screen accurate Australian man. Um, uh, what was I saying? How much radiation is too much radiation? Uh, 10 grays or a thousand rads in this game and in real life is lethal. About half of that will kill about half of the people who experience it. Um, that's the LD-50. That's how you say that. Ugh. Where's my Lucy? I want to get Goosey. Um, so about half that, five, uh, 500 rads. 
Give me that proboscis. Um, 500 rads. Or five grays or so. Um, but as you, you, you would start to get worried at just uh, one gray. Um, so, yeah, so just a, a hundred red. You would start to get, or ten red, sorry. Um, wait, no, a hundred red. <laughs> at a at, at hundred red, I'm doing math and reading chat and, and walking around. Um, so at just, get out of my face. At just a hundred rad, you would get into radiation poisoning levels, um, and in this game, that happen that can happen really quickly. Just ten rads, ten rad over what period of time? Over a quick, quick period of time. So you brought up a good point. You got to put. You, you, you brought up a good point. Time does make a difference. So getting your yearly dose of radiation that is acceptable all at once could ha uh, could give you some kind of acute radiation poisoning. Um, but spread over a year, it's much more tolerable to your body, right? I had radiation treatment for cancer about 20 years ago. Should I be worried, says Teague? No. So what's good about radiation is that it kills living cells. What's bad about radiation is that it kills living cells and possibly mutates them. Um, so you, you <laughs> much like Thanos, you use the, the radiation to destroy the thing that could have been caused by radiation. Um, so cancer cells, you irradiate them such that they just die. Um, but they don't stay radioactive. You are, you are, you are killing the cells. Um, like I said before, directed radiation doesn't make you radioactive. You need to be contaminated with some radioactive material. Now, that's not strictly true because you can become activated, so-called activated, by neutrons if there's enough radiation going around. But we don't, ha uh, we don't have to get into that. That's only if you're working in, like, a, you know, the National Ignition Facility or something. Hey, Kyle. What advice would you give to starting science communicators on how to write good scripts? Says Cy Mick. Um, Cy, uh, what I used to do is find people who you are impressed by and then watch some of their stuff or read some of their stuff and start writing down why it's good and why it works. Pay attention to special things like voicing, pace, tone, topics, all that stuff, and make a note about it. And then watch a lot of people and cross, uh, cross analyze, compare, contrast, and then try to find your voice within all that. Liz Calver with the 10 tiny human question of the week. Does antimatter exist? Yes. What is dark matter? We don't know. I like your hair like that. Thank you. Also, can your eyes pop out when you sneeze? No. That was a lot of science times. Um, antimatter is just matter with an opposite charge. Um, if it encounters matter, regular matter, it annihilates and releases energy according to E equals MC squared. Dark matter, we don't know what it is. We don't, it doesn't interact with any matter normally aside from gravitationally, which is why we say it's dark. We can't see it, we can't interact with it, but it does interact gravitationally. That's why we have some indirect evidence of it from the spinning of spiral galaxies, uh, or the spinning of galaxies. Um, <sighs> what else did you say? Did you say, say something else? Preston Garvey's in the chat. This area doesn't appear to be a safe place for another settlement. Preston, get, get out of here. I, I'm intentionally avoiding you right now. Another tennis to call. My brother's an electrician at a Larkin nuclear power plant. He has to get laid off. He gets. He has to get laid off every six months to wear off irradiation as he works on the fun stuff. Can that worsen over time? Um, so that makes sense. Uh, so like when I went to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, those workers when they're working in the spicy areas um, have to be rotated in and out so that they don't go over their yearly dose limit. So that that happens. But as long as you're staying within a safe limit, you're not accumulate your body 
repairs damage. And so if you're not getting harmful mutations, you're staying below safe limits, it's not like you're building up to something terrible. Um, it's not going to build forever. Um, is there any better way to store nuclear waste than burying it or storing it in silos, says Alex. Yeah, uh, deep, deep isolation. Bury it below the water table, below geologic ac activity, a couple kilometers or a kilometer, kilometer, <laughs> kilometer below ground. Sorry, I had some indigestion there. Bury nuclear waste a kilometer or so below the ground and you'll never have to worry about it again. No one's going to find it. It's not going to get in there. No one's going to get in there. I'm saving ammo. Dog meat. Oh, jeez. Um, but that would be the safest, easiest way to dis dispose of nuclear waste. Um, super duper easy, but we just don't do it. Um, I, I spoke... I spoke in DC two weeks ago to the National Energy Institute, uh, the Nuclear Energy Institute in our nation's capital. That's what I was trying to say. Um, send nuclear waste into space, too expensive, too dangerous. What if it explodes like rockets often do? Um, and what one of the people from the State Department, yeah, I'm kind of an official guy. Um, what a woman from the State Department told me is that all of the nuclear waste in the United States could be stored on a square footage of two to three Walmarts. But Kyle, that can't possibly be true. It is. That's all the space we need. A couple Walmarts worth of square footage, and you could bury all the nuclear waste that exists in the United States. And that's it. Why don't we do that, Kyle? Because we don't have the because there's a misinformation problem, there's public fear, and there's a lack of political will to engage with those topics because of the fear, and it costs a lot of money. Yeah, we could do this tomorrow. Like I said uh, in an episode that got me on the radar of the government in the first place, we solved nuclear waste decades ago. We really could just bury it in a somewhat sophisticated cave, and that'd be that. A cow, couldn't things leak out? Nuclear waste isn't wet. Nuclear waste isn't goo. Nuclear waste is, it's either spent fuel rods, which are pieces of metal, in evacuated tanks surrounded by concrete and steel, or it's vitrified material. It's melted down and combined with glass and concrete. It's a solid thing, it's like a plug. Um, of material. There's no goo. There is there, there is no nuclear. There is no high level nuclear waste from a nuclear power plant that is goo. Tony P. Kyle, you're one of the best YouTubers out there. Haha. <laughs> Not true. How long does it take for a fuel rod to become spent? Uh, that depends. Um, but it can be a couple of years. You can th th the efficiency of fission reactions allows you to have years of energy from fuel rods and fuel pellets. The government hit you up? Yeah. Yeah. On that, on that last uh, video, the uh, nuclear waste video where I kissed a nuclear waste cask um, with my own lips, um, I was working with the Department of Energy and the White House Office of Nuclear Energy and Nuclear Power on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's also PPE, isn't it? Yeah, Steph, low-level nuclear waste can be stuff like contaminated gloves and, and lab coats and stuff, but high-level nuclear waste is the stuff that you need to, first say, take out of a nuclear reactor and then let cool in a cooling pond. That's where you see the nice blue glow. And then after that cools down for a couple of years, then you move it to dry cast storage on site, which again, you could just bury forever. The Simpsons was one of the worst things to ever happen in nuclear power. Yeah, I, I had that idea for an episode, actually. I, I thought to myself, I, there would have to be some social studies studies on it. But yeah, I, I, I've seen some evidence to the contrary, like opinion polling about nuclear, uh, nuclear power and The Simpsons and stuff. But, but I, I wouldn't doubt that The Simpsons has harmed the image of nuclear power 
to a significant degree. Where does the misconception of radioactive goo come from? It says, a la fandom. I think it's places like The Simpsons. Um, yeah. Um, and it glows green because of, and everything, look, look on the screen. Everything has that characteristic green glow because of one of the first applications of radium, science time. We're not getting anywhere in the, in the game at all. We're just science timing. Uh, radium and a, and a paint called Undark that would glow this, what would become a characteristic clean, uh, green glow. I'm also reading the chat as I'm speaking, so sometimes words slip into sentences. Um, but if you ever heard about the Radium Girls, that's what they were making, Undark, this paint, and it, and it glowed this brilliant green, and that became characteristic of nuclear stuff. But um, not uh, nothing nuclear glows by itself. Kyle, are you going to Kyle, Texas for the largest gathering of Kyles? You know, I actually thought about it. But would it be worth it? Let me work it. Lay down, flip it, and reverse it. They could excavations. Yeah, I know what they want. We're going that away, chat. I don't know what that away lies. I still have one of those watches. Is it dangerous? No. I don't think so. You could always buy a radio code. Geiger counter if you wanted to check it out. Um, but radium... Uh oh! Is one of the most radioactive... elements there is. Um, and radi radium is dangerous. Very much so. Uh, working with radium is... Oh, I'm out. Working with radium is... Stop it! No! Is part of the reason uh, Mary Curie, uh, Mary Curie died. Stop it! Um, that's also who Curie in this game is named after, Mary Curie. Um, but her discovery of and working with radium is part of why she she died eventually. Um, but yeah, the radium girls. Sorry, ignore all this violence, will you? Um, fast! Attack speed! Uh, give me your butt cheek meat. Chet, I have a strong opinion. If you don't have butt cheeks, you don't have a butt. Um, any hoozlebees. Uh, yeah, so the radium girls worked with radium. They made the paint undark. Undark is that characteristic green glow of watches, gun sights, other stuff like that, and how they were working with the undark paint, uh, uh, making the the watch paintbrushes <laughs> into fine points with their mouths. They were getting radium contamination in their mouths and um, radi uh, radium was building up in their bones because your body mistakes a lot of different material. Like, your, your body doesn't care chemically between a radioactive metal and a non-radioactive metal such that it can incorporate... Yeah, you just stay right there. Such that it can incorporate radium into your jaw like it was another kind of metal, like it was calcium or something. And so these poor women um, had radium accumulating in their jaw, and then they would, like, lose their jaw or get terrible cancer um, near their jaw. Uh, Strum Theory with the one... Oh! This dog is going to kill me. Strum Theory with the 199. Don't glow? Don't nuclear reactors glow blue? No, so... so Uranium doesn't glow blue. Nuclear reactors don't glow blue. What glows is the is the water surrounding the nuclear reactor. It is energized. It is given energy by high energy particles coming out of the reactor the, during the fission process. Um, and that high energy excites the water molecules. And when they go back down to a rest state, they emit radiation in the visible light spectrum. It happens to be blue. This is called Cherenkov radiation. You probably have heard of it. Um, 
but it's not the reactor itself glowing. It's the stuff around the reactor. Come here. Come here, you mutt. Uh, and so similar, when I say nuclear stuff doesn't glow, like radium doesn't glow, the air around it glows. Um, or the paint that it's energizing glows. That's different. Get him! Get him! Which reminds me, of course, of the most famous fact. Okay, maybe I should go to Concord and get some weapons and armor and stuff. <laughs> Which reminds me of the most famous um, fact about Marie Curie these days is that um, they still have her notes in a box lined with lead. Uh, Niels Daniel Bush isn't isn't Cherenkov radiation because particles move faster than the speed of light and water. Yes. So nothing can move faster than the speed of light, chat. That's just the fact of the universe. Um, but you can move faster than light does in a certain medium. And so Cherenkov radiation happens because the high energy, high energy particles from the fuel and from the fusion, uh, from the fission reactions, those particles are moving faster than light does in water. We're just kind of wandering, talking about science. You guys like that? You guys, e even though we're not like doing stories and stuff, do you like that? And we're just kind of wandering. Is it like wandering with like a nerdy friend or something? Because that sounds nice, huh? That kind of sounds nice. That kind of sounds nice, don't you? Just wandering around with that nerdy friend who's Maybe not doing so well in the Don't brain. Have any bobby pins. Maybe not doing so well in the brain right now, but he's still interesting. Like, dang. That guy sure likes to talk about stuff. You're right. I do. What's the speed of dark? Uh, says Shop Shooter with the two. It's Bob Ross science. Um, uh, <clears throat> Sharpshooter, uh, my colleague in arms. Uh, Vsauce has a good video about the speed of dark. Is that even a speed in the- I'm trapped in a wall of emotion! Um, go look up Vsauce's video, Speed of Dark, it's very good. You're gonna slip into Bob Ross pretty soon? No, 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 no. We're not gonna do that. All we're gonna do here is we're gonna get ourselves to Concord. Once we get ourselves to Concord, we're gonna get everything sorted out. Hmm, we're gonna give we're gonna give Mama Murphy some chem so she can feel okay. We just want her to be our friend, you know. Everybody needs a friend, especially out here. And out here in the wasteland, I ain't got time to hate anybody. I just ain't got that kind of time. I've been thinking about this for a long, long time. Hey, how you guys doing? I know what I'm talking about here. Bullshit! You can't just put something between two pieces. I I'm gonna sleep in your bed. I'm just gonna sleep in your bed here. No worries. I'm just gonna sleep for eight hours behind you, strangers. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Simic. That Simic. That should that should be my. Uh, <laughs> that should be uh, the description of this video. Yes, Aaron with the five gaming like membi so bembies. Thanks for I'll being here. Like I always say, you don't need to. You don't need to donate. You don't need to do any of that. But I appreciate the heck out of it when you do. Now let's just get back to gaming here. We hear a lot of gunshots here. So what we're gonna do? Wandering the wasteland with Kyle Hill. Hey, that's me. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna find some raiders. And we're just gonna stab them. So what we're gonna do here? We're gonna take out our two-inch blade. We're gonna take out our two-inch blade. We're gonna find a raider. Now what we want to do is identify some of the largest veins and arteries in their body. Uh, which is going to be right underneath the arm, uh, right there on the interior of the thigh. We're also going to go for the aorta, right in the middle of the chest there. And once, <laughs> once we go for that, we're going to see some some Indian red, some yellows coming out of their bodies. And once we got that, we're going to we're going to paint a, a beautiful canvas of violence, starting right here, 
But first, we're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> you know me, you know me, I like to get crazy. We're just gonna light things up a little bit here. We're gonna take some, we're gonna take some Indian yellow. We're gonna take some Indian yellow here and we're gonna, we're just gonna apply it liberally there. We're gonna, we're gonna sprint over here. We're gonna sprint over towards this raider. We're gonna aim there for an aorta. Oh, see that beautiful red. See that beautiful red. See these reds. See, see how, see how we do that? See how they do that with just with the pre-stretch canvas? How we do that there? Yeah. So we're gonna apply to put a lot of blood on the paint. Put a lot of blood. Put a lot of blood on the brush. What we're gonna do is put just put a lot of blood on the brush. And we're just gonna apply it. See, when we already have some liquid white. When we already have some liquid white here on the pre-stretch canvas. Just see, 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 see how quickly everything just goes up on the people are gonna. Hey, if you'd like to sell paintings, this is this is how you're gonna sell your paintings. People, people love this kind of effect, and they're not gonna know how easy it was for you to do. Okay, it's gonna be you and you and my little secrets. Okay then. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this laser musket. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> see, I don't have a, the best. Bob Ross voice, but I know all his mannerisms, and so I can kind of do the accent. I can do a good Bob Ross impression. Kyle, why are you so handsome and smart? Um, genetics and school and luck. Mostly luck. Actually, it's all luck. There we go. There we go now. <laughs> We're just gonna beat the devil out of him right here. We're just gonna aim right there. We're gonna aim for his head parts right there. We're gonna wait for him to peek again. We're gonna do this. Oh, and he just he just he just kind of explodes in this nice reds and yellows that we're looking for from for, from a scene like this. And when we have a scene like this, what we're really trying to do here is create that illusion of depth. That illusion of depth. The illusion of your knife just plunging into the canvas. Just <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I may have broken myself. There we go. There we go. We're gonna put on a batting helmet here. We're gonna put on right leather arm, right leather leg. And we're just gonna we're just gonna cut this peen off right here real quick. Cheryl P, good to see you again. Is this a new channel? I just found it. No. It's just the algorithm, because we chose to stream Fallout 4 again during the Fallout show, the algorithm has surfaced me to you. Did you shoot his clothes off? Uh, no, I, um, I sliced his ween. That's what I did. Did a quick little ween slice in chat. We're gonna start with noise here. We're gonna start with, uh, we're gonna start with, uh, no. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we sliced his ween, we may have sliced a taint or two. We didn't slice his taint or two, that's fine. So it's definitely I in the middle, we're gonna go with child now. So it's definitely I in the middle. We're gonna go with, is it shiny, Chet? Is it shiny? No, can't be shiny. Wait, what else, wait. Did I get something wrong here? Oh, I probably did. It's probably uh, S and T. Cool. I'm not paying it. See, I never get those wrong, which means I am I'm not having a good time. My brain is just not. I'm not doing so hot right now. Never understood this minigame. I'll explain it in a second. But I just wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> Ow! Good dog. You're, you're kind of caked up, huh, buddy? There we go. That's what I want. That's what I want, Chet. 13? Eh. 
It's actually a speed strat. Uh, 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 he's got he's got so many cocktails of the Molotov variety. <laughs> See now, if if you thought the show was violent, it's because the games are all very very violent. Kyle, I talked to my dad about the cold fusion thing earlier. He he actually worked on cold fusion experiments at Sandia. He said it most likely wouldn't work at all in the near future. Magnetic fusion would. Yes, that makes sense. I'm a huge fan of Fallout. Glad you're playing, says Omni. I'm a huge fan, too. That's why we're here. What am I aiming? Oh, I was using the wrong uh, reticle. Yep. My body! Oh, now I have to go get the thing that I didn't get the thing for. I have a Vault Boy bobblehead. Yeah, me too. It's around here somewhere. Remember, chat, we are playing Lucy Goosey right now. MTG soon on game nights, says John Adams. John, I was, ju I was just on game nights last month, man. I was on the Fallout episode. I was in the Fallout episode. Whatever, it's fine. It's fine, Chet. Wait. Got it. Go check it out, John. Running any mods, says Thomas Quick. I am running some mods. But there was like for hair color and stuff. I didn't install anything big. Um, aside from some stuff that makes like all of your armor. Like now, armor can be applied over any, um, any outfit that you're wearing. Wish I got here two hours earlier, says JT. The fun thing is you can rewind on YouTube. Just another reason why I don't like Twitch. Among the many reasons that I don't like Twitch. First and foremost being, I don't know if I'm gonna get softcore porn or not next to my games of StarCraft that I'm trying to watch. Hmm. Where am I going? Focus up. Now that's a pump. Whew. Now them's a pump -em. Are those blue, are those glasses for blue light protection or for role playing, says Alec Dar. Yes. These are the official Vault 33 gunner glasses. I'm excited for Fallout to remaster on the 25th. Part of the reason why we're playing it, we're getting ready to in, indulge in that new content. Man, I don't know who you are, but your time is impeccable. Preston Garvey, Commonwealth Minutemen. God damn it. Is Preston Garvey still in the chat? You owe me. Yeah, sure thing. I'll give you my chest full of emeralds just as soon as we're out of this mess. A uh, thank you would be nice. Now that's a glorpanizer. Who are these people? Just folks looking for a new home, a fresh start. I've been with them since Quincy. Lexington looked good for a while, but the ghouls drove us out of there. Hey. Okay. Hey, smooth skin. Sorry. Sounds really rough. God damn it. Thanks. It's good to meet someone who really cares. I don't. Anyway. Are you going to explain the minigame? Uh, it's Wordle. To settle. It's the exact same thing as Wordle, Spencer. Wrong. Uh, that but Wordle stole... Well, we do have one idea. The idea from this game. One good idea can make all the difference. Sturgis? No mid-break today, Kyle? No, I, I got to power through it, and then I have to go to bed war. You might and, and die in peace. Well, looks like one of its passengers left behind a seriously sweet goodie. We're talking a full suit of cherry T-45 power armor. <laughs> Screw the power armor. I want to see where you got... Where'd you get the pomade for that... For that pompadour? That's some serious protection. Oh, it gets better. 
Good luck with the, the suit. Good luck with the death claw coming up. Yeah, no worries. Minigun. <laughs> now we're talking. I know, right? Only there's one hitch. The suit's out of juice. Probably been. It can be. I'll help if I can. I got one. But mm -hmm. look, I fixed him. Mm -hmm. I got one. Mm -hmm. Standard long-term nuclear battery. Why are nuclear batteries long-term? Again, we were talking about the efficiency of nuclear processes. And when I say efficiency, I mean that you don't need a lot of material to produce a lot of energy. They are energy dense. They're a million times more energy dense than fossil fuel processes. So you need a million times less material to produce the same amount of energy comparing something like coal or uh, natural gas to a uranium fuel pellet. Where's my uranium fuel pellet? There it is. So comparing it to something like this, right? Why are you playing as a woman? Uh, because it's Lucy from the show. Um, so like a uranium fuel pellet is very small. Here's one. And on this educational handout it says this one uranium fuel pellet provides as much energy as 1,000 kilograms of coal or 150 gallons of oil. Just this tiny little pellet right here. This is this tiny little guy right there. Um, so that's, in, that's extremely energy dense, right? Um, so you would be able to fit, get a lot of power out of small stuff. Now, condensing a nuclear battery or a nuclear fusion battery down to that size seems impossible to me uh, because you would need um, radiation shielding and, and all that sort of stuff. So that seems kind of impossible. But if it's more of like a nuclear battery, like someone in the, uh, like Kyle J. Bungo, <laughs> I like your name, says in the chat, if it was more like an RTG or a radioisotope thermal generator, that starts to make more sense, where you have a small amount of electricity generated just from the heat produced by the, radio the radioactive material alone. Um, but that doesn't produce very much energy. So to power like an entire building or a power armor suit, that doesn't quite square itself away. Um, but that's why we're in the next episode about Fallout that we put on the channel. I'm going to ask all of you to tag Bethesda so that my agents can talk to them and we can do science advising for the next game or the next season of the show. That's my solution. Um, Kyle, can you talk about mining the moon for helium-3? Uh, so helium-3, Luke Intrabartolo. Luke Intrabartolo. Um, helium-3 is a fusion fuel that doesn't produce neutrons in the reaction. Neutrons in the reaction are bad because they can activate materials. That's what we glossed over earlier. And when I say activate, it means making non-radioactive material radioactive, like the fillings in your teeth, which has happened um, in some nuclear criticality accidents, specifically Cecil Kelly's, which we have an episode on on the main Chan Chan. But uh, Science Eddie plays Fallout again. Matthew? Matthew, we're taking advantage of a cultural moment. Um, so regular deuterium-tritium reactions like you do in nuclear fusion produce a lot of neutrons, um, and those neutrons would inevitably activate material in the fusion reactor, and you'd have to replace parts of the fusion reactor over time because they get so dang radioactive. Um, Helium-3 doesn't have the same neutron production, and so though it would produce less energy per reaction, you wouldn't have the same activation problem. That's why you hear about helium-3. That's why. If you need a mental break, I don't think any of us would mind a short stream. <laughs> you kidding me? I'm fine, fine, I'm... Wh what? Wh uh, uh. Actually, I already grabbed the fusion core. We're set. 
Well, all right. Could you explain the hacking minigame strategy again? It says Omni, it's uh, Wordle. So it will give you, you, you pick a word and then it will say likeness. It will give you a likeness, a number of likeness. And if that likeness is anything more than zero, it means one of the, one of the letters is, in the, is correct and in the correct spot. So it's one step up from Wordle. That's why they don't, it makes you keep track of what the letters are and what the letters could be. But the likeness tells you that there are one to two to three to four to whatever letters that are correct in the right spot. And then you use the other options and you, cr and you compare them. So if, you know, so if the first word has zero likeness, then the next word that you pick can't have any of the same letters in the same spot. And so from there, it's, you know, process of elimination. What's the most accurate game with nuclear science? Uh, probably some indie game that I don't know of. Kyle, you should build your own nuclear powered PC. Now I'd probably irradiate myself. Don't call Britney Spears on us, Kyle. We care about you. Don't worry. I'm not going to shave my head and dance around with steak knives. I pro but I can promise you that if I do start doing that, I'm not going to post it while nude. I would put myself in a conservatorship. Maybe our luck's finally. Let's hey let's there. let's let's kill a giant radioactive dinosaur thing, huh? Yeah, perfect. Okay. I'll hold them off from here. So. Something coming. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's it's angry. It's not Alex Jones, is it? First time chatting, hello Kyle in chat, says Steamboat Captain. Willie, happy to have you here. Yeah, so we're getting, uh, Benjamin, we're getting back into the game before the next gen update. Um, and as you can see from the high number of people here, a lot of people are excited about the new show. We're answering questions. We're up to what? 43 science times. I'm wearing cool, official, sexy science glasses. Come on. When Lucy from the Fallout TV show drank the radiation water, how long would she have to live? Says Angel Salazar. I, there's, I, I would very much doubt that the water would be that contaminated. Um, so when Lucy drinks water from the show and she eventually throws up because she has minor radiation poisoning, um, yeah, water... In my experience, <laughs> uh, in a place, so chat, there's many of new people in the chat. So to all my regular professors and members, I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but to all the newbies in the chat, I've spent a lot of time in Chernobyl. Um, I spent a lot of time in Fukushima and I have video series on each one of those on the main channel. If you want to check it out, uh, the, the video pinned at the top will take you to the main channel in the chat. Um, but I've been to the two most contaminated places on Earth, uh, speaking nuclear disasterly. And um, the ground, the water, it's not irradiated enough. It's not contaminated enough such that if you took a few sips of it, you would get radiation poisoning. Um, in a place like Chernobyl, that's different. Um, where if you had hot particles, um, actual pieces of fuel from the exploded reactor number four in Chernobyl, um, that would be an issue. That would be a serious issue if you ingested one of those. Um, so yeah, maybe she was unlucky enough to ingest like a hot particle or something like that. But how long you have to live when you, uh, radiation... Even, even deadly doses of radiation, like the Demon Core accidents or anything like that, like Chompy is showing you on the main channel, even those, you still get days or weeks to live as your body breaks down. Um, your, the cells that replicate very quickly in your body die off very quickly. Your white blood cells, your red blood cells, your ability to fight off infection, therefore, um, 
then your body just breaks down from the inside out. There was a man named Cecil Kelly who had a criticality accident, which we have a video about, and um, he took so such a dose of radiation that when they autopsied him, they said inside of his bones, where your red and white blood cells are made, was basically mush. Um, so uh, all of this is to say that nuclear fallout doesn't contaminate an area such that you're just going to drop dead. It's more of a long-term... Um, more of a long-term health hazard. So while there is a way that Lucy drank some water that gave her very quickly radiation poisoning, in my experience, I, ha I haven't encountered anything like that, but it's, it's certainly possible. Um, And it's, it's different. You, you don't even get nuclear fallout unless you detonate nuclear bombs in a certain way. Um, so we, have, we also have a video about it. It's, it's almost like it's my job, but we also have a video about this. Why isn't Hiroshima a wasteland? Like the nuclear wasteland. Benjamin, I appreciate you being here. Um, why isn't... Hiroshima nuclear wastelands because it was an airburst weapon that didn't vaporize a large amount of dirt and create a large amount of dust to which radioactive particles, fission products could attach and then fall out on. And so most of the fallout, um, uh, most of the radiation and particles that were produced after Hiroshima gave up their radiation very quickly and, and, dissipated into the atmosphere to the point of harmlessness. Um, so we already have examples of nuclear weapons being used for offensive purposes that don't produce fallout. And I think that's significant because the best way to destroy a city from a military perspective is not necessarily a bomb placement that produces the most fallout like a ground burst or a subsurface burst. Those would those would create the most amount of fallout because they encounter the most amount of material to vaporize. Air burst produces the most overpressure, so a bomb exploded in the air produces the most overpressure, pressure over atmospheric that would you you would use to topple buildings and kill people with blunt force trauma. Um, and that's a that's one of the most useful military techniques. Um, so in Fallout, the Chinese dropping bombs on Los Angeles, like you saw in the first episode of the show, I would imagine, if I was the military, I would imagine most of them would be airbursts. Um, so there wouldn't actually be a lot of Fallout that would make the surface uninhabitable for 200 years or whatever. Um, but Kyle, the story says it is. Well, then that's fine. That's all. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm i probably rambling at this point, chat, but you'll have to forgive me. So oh. you saw this in the show. Putting, who just came outside? Oh, hey buddy. Getting the fusion reactor. They made the suits so screen accurate. Like, it's, it, they perfectly did the suits. In the Fallout show, the nuke seems small and detonated at ground level. Yeah, I mean, that would, <laughs> that would mess up a lot of stuff. Potten Doggins? Chompy, I'm gonna remove you as mod. Up here. here we, go. we got somebody up here. It's time for Lucy to get a little goosey chat. Why don't you huh. get down here? Show me that fancy gun up close. Okay. Not a lot of people can get past my boy. Give you that. Okay. I don't remember this gun being reloadable. Oh, my buddy. Is that me? 
Walton Goggins is a Fallout style name. Chat, if you like Walton Goggins and you uh, want more of him, and you want more of him as a Southern cowboy type, may I suggest watching Justified, one of the best shows on FX ever. Whoo! Man, is Justified good. It's fine. It's fine. Go for the crunch! Oh, this is all your fault. Oh, oh no. Shoot for the crotch. Always. Oh, this is all your fault. Oh, oh. I'm Knight Titus. Ow. I'm trying to cripple the legs, Chet. Which I, I think I just did. No. Oh! Ooh, I like all those bullets hitting the ground like that. Just drink some quick, dirty water. Some grilled rochi. You hurt my dog. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll use the, the door frame as cover. Oh, it's actually working. I'm just going to reload. Don't worry about me. Ow! I shot him right in his cloaca, Chet. It's a multi-purpose orifice. It's okay, buddy. Just like in the show. Are the suits and fall something we make practically? I mean, we do have, um... We do have exosuit kind of stuff, but nothing like this. Hey. Hey. <laughs> nothing quite like this. Always shoot for the crotch. Chet, you know what I say. Always aim for the crotch of the leg. You know I say that. Now, see, see what I like? See the ra the radiation counter on my suit? It goes from 1 to 10. Now, I'm going to guess that's, re that's rads per second. Um, that's really bad. Um, all of you saw what I said about Goggins and Justified, right? Go watch Justified. Um, but that's really bad. It doesn't go up to 11, so it's not strictly better. Um, but like we said... What we worry about in radiation health safety are the units of grays and sieverts because it directly correlates to effects on human flesh. Um, thanks, Shakte, for another 10. HSB with a 499. Any theory why no children were involved? 32? No, not yet. But it's... Um, Walton Goggins is also in uh, The Righteous Gemstones. He's great. He's great. Um, anyway, so RADS is an outdated unit of measuring radioactive absorbed dose. Um, it's outdated because it doesn't have... Uh, it doesn't give you an immediate indication of what it would do to human tissue or watery tissue that, you know, a creature might have. So we use uh, the units grays and sieverts, which have their own vagaries, but uh, what's important is that they're about... They're about... Uh, a hundred times a, a rentgen, a rentgen, if, if you're nasty, rads and rems. Okay. So one gray is maybe radiation poisoning, maybe some long-term health effects, possible increase in cancer rate over time, over your lifetime, and one gray. So that's 100 rads at which that happens. And so if, we, if our suit goes to like 10 rads per second, that means in the worst case scenario, that's 10 seconds before we have serious health effects. Crazy. That's bad. 
Don't mind me, just in a big suit. That was a pretty amazing display. I'm just glad you were on our side. I'm on I'm my on side. My own side Garvey. I don't even know you. It's a shame. You can never have too many friends in the common. Listen, when we first met, you said we owed you for helping us out. Yeah, where are those emeralds at? You've earned it. So here. It may not be a chest full of emeralds, but it'll have to do. Oh, right. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> Spoken like a true merc. Well, if you ever feel like fighting for something other than yourself, I could use someone like you. All right, Garvey. I'm in. Oh. Okay. I'm Another listening. settlement needs your help. A woman out of time. Out of hope. But all is not. <laughs> just sitting there with their mouth wide open. I knew it. Do you know what death claws are? What they used to be? I think they're uh, mutated alligator, uh, alligators and crocodiles. Yeah. Can't see him. Or is it chameleons? Not clearly. Or is it but both? But I feel his life force, and even I don't need the sight of a great green jewel. Uh -huh. We're off to Diamond City. Mama Murphy, I'm working from nothing. Mama Murphy is the oh, highest kid. bastard in I'm Diamond going. City. Maybe you bring me some chems later. Mama Murphy, we talked about See, he still has this weird bug where I still, the dialogue ends quickly. Chameleons, iguanas, iguanas. <laughs> if you do this, you sign on for an eternity of hammering on nothing. So this dream is, oh, that's what you meant, dream. Yes, I should have never talked to them, so I never get those quests. Right, you're right, I should have done that. Now I have to... Now I have to hear them hammering day and night for the rest of my life. You're right. <laughs> Is this live? Says Jan Boshma. No, I pre-recorded your question and my answer. The OG Death Claws base their genetics from chameleons. You ever seen a chameleon? Or ever been around a chameleon? They are not very fast, agile... ...repy reps. Reptiles, that is. You never have to save them to do the story? I should have done that! I messed up huge. Too close. All right, let's go back. Let's level up, because chat is getting angry about it. Lucy had more luck, right? Five luck? I think Lucy had five or six luck. So let's get our stat. The first thing I want to do, before we get any weird perks or anything like that, is make sure that our stats actually track Little Lucy Goosey. That's not the button that I wanted. What's that? Oh, see, he's still wa he's actively lo walking towards me. Quick, we must escape him. Quickly to the Museum of Freedom. I do like idiot savant. Death claws are made in labs. This is Falcor. Are they? And they escaped? I'd believe them if they were like Komodo dragons. Komodo dragons, Chad, are the largest reptile on Earth. And uh, science time. This isn't really here nor there. Uh, where am I going? Um, but Komodo dragons, for a long time, we, th we had this weird idea that their their mouths were so dirty it led to bacterial infections which ended up killing their prey 
it wasn't until relatively recently that we discovered there are, in fact, venom glands in there. Um, wait, you're right, Luet, say, Luas Nation. They're not bigger than a saltwater crocodile. Are they the second largest? What am I talking about? Am I right? Man, they're not bigger than, like, leatherback sea turtles. Maybe the third largest. Huh. I don't know where in my head that was. Anyway, um, there are venom glands in the mouths of Komodo dragons, and when we scanned their skinny skin, we found that they have a subdermal armor. Subdermal bone armor, which you can't even get in this game. Um, and that's, there's stuff up there. What do I got up there? That subdermal bone armor is literally like bone mesh underneath their skin. You can go look at it. Trash can? What up, trash can, you trash woman, dirt girl? Uh, what up, dirt girl? Um, you can look up x-rays of it right now and go, go ahead, Google it. Go, like, uh, bone armor Komodo dragon, and you'll see that they have, like, a bone mesh underneath their skin, which evolved to help them deal with, you know, taking down the giant prey that they take down, like wildebeest and crap, and they they fight viciously with other Komodos, um, and so that helps. Um, Thought I saw something. What up? Let's do it, dirty! You dirty girl! I'm gonna stab him. Nah. Come on, trash lady. Let's take out the trash. Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Oh, you you murdered him. That's how Will Smith laughs, Chet. Ha 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 ha! Woo! What, what, say, what, what, say, what, what? I'll tell you what not to say what, what. Anything about my wife who hates me, who I'm not actually married to. Okay, so let's see if we can get some more armor on my body here. Maybe we can wear some uh, shoulder piece that Lucy doesn't actually know how to put on her body in the game. See, now I think... I have this new armor mod. Oh, I'm still carrying this. Oops. Um, I have this new armor mod, so everything should actually go over my clothes now. Oh yeah, see, it all works. Nice. <laughs> what, what, say what? I can't believe no one laughed at my Will Smith quip. We had a deal, Trudy. Hand over the goods. No. You owe us. No I one. Giving you poison shilling chem pushers anything. Chem pusher. Oh, easy there. Man bun. Oh, no one can have a man bun but me. Come here. Come here. You will pay for your discretion against the man bud association. You and you will pay by association to his association to the man bun association. That's just what happens. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them with an iron bun. Sometimes you gotta get loosey-goosey with him, chat. What am I missing? Left arm? Right arm. Oh, stage right. Got it. I need a left arm. No, a right arm. A left arm. Stage right. Stage left. Stage arm. Got it. I'm still carrying the minigun. Don't need that. Auto pistol. I'll sell all this crap. Kyle, pay attention to us. We're in chat. Huh? Because Will Smith doesn't laugh like that? Yes, he does. How possible is a shoulder nuke launcher? What kind of micro nuke would it be? Or its tonnage is Falcor Rigo. Um, the smallest... Sign, sign. The smallest nuclear weapon ever developed was the Davy Crockett. Um, it's like 40 to 50 pounds uh, warhead. And I think the kilotonnage was like one like 1.5 kilotons, um, which is crazy. 
Um, but it wouldn't have been shoulder mounted in a fat man. Um, the Davy Crockett was meant to be launched from like a tripod looking thing, um, like you'd see artillery or mortars being far- fired out of, or you could f- you could mount this thing in the back of a truck and fire it out of that. Um, I think it was fired once. Is it Operation Grable? I think uh, Operation Grable, if you want to look that up on YouTube, has a shot of a real mini nuke. Um, and if you don't, so so 1.5, science up, 1.5 kilotons TNT equivalent is a lot. Um, it's not that much in terms of nuclear weapons at all. Um, the Fat Man and Little Boy bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, respectively, were 15 kilotons. So 10 times bigger. Yeah, Davy Crockett was shot in Metal Gear Solid 3, I think. When uh, Colonel Volgan's in the helicopter, before you feel up that guy's junk and his taint. Um, Hey, you're not Ivan. I can tell by how your balls are. Um, So 15 kilotons was like the smallest nuclear weapon. And that was dropped on Japan. Um... 1.5 1.5 or 10 times less is what the mini nuke would be, and it sounds like it's a lot less. But do you all remember seeing the explosion in Beirut? All those videos of that explosion in Beirut that uh, produced a 3.3, um, 3.3 Richter scale earthquake? Kuabara, Kuabara. Uh, this guy is going to feel up my crotch. Um, do you guys remember that explosion in Beirut? Um, that was a, a 1.5 kiloton equivalent. So imagine a a pickup truck being able to f- create that explosion on the battlefield. That's crazy and very scary. Um So that's like what a tactical nuclear weapon would be like. A weapon that you could use on the battlefield without, you know, destroying the battlefield. There's only 20 tons? Not 1.5 kilotons? Am I crazy? Sure about that? Well, whatever. I'm probably wrong. I don't feel so good. Our brain's not working today. No, Preston Garvey, no. Jet Rifle 420. You're lame. I just subbed to let you know, and now I'm gone. Chompy, ban that guy. I don't care if you're subbed. I'm never going to see your... ugly face again. And it is ugly, trust me. Look like you need braces, too. Get out. Your hair alone promotes you to adequacy. We're doing the Lucy thing right now. We're walking. We're walking with gigantic eyes in a jawline that probably that guy that we just banned would have a problem with on Reddit and he would try to Photoshop into a more feminine quote unquote face. That Jetstream guy, that's the kind of guy he is. And trust me, it's a he. Oh, oh, we're working today. Oh, we're working today, son. Uh, as a fellow follow fan, can I ask your ask you about your take on the show? This is John. I think it's great. I think it's a great adaptation. 
I enjoy the show very much. I think it's a perfect look. You got it. You got. Blah, you got to acknowledge. Don't go anywhere near Corvega. There's so many raiders up there, dude. You got to acknowledge. It takes a lot of. Uh, excuse the language, but cojones to take a a 25-year-old video game with a rabid fan base and do an entirely new story, right? And to have all of the games stay canon. And to do all that and get the casting right and get the look right and the feel right and all of that stuff and still have it be kind of darkly funny but not too funny and, you know, violent and all that. Like, it, it's it's nearly perfect, right? I mean, how much better could it be? Oh, so I was way off on the kilotonnage of the Davy Crockett? Ah, okay. Okay. Well, I'm not doing so hot today, chat, so you're gonna have to forgive me for that one. Give me that helmet! What? What'd you find, buddy? Oh, thank you! Good job, boy. Uh, good job. How you doing, buddy? Good job, buddy. Can you do any tricks? Hey, boy. You know any tricks? Good job, good job, good job. That was me petting. You can criticize the show if you want to, John. I just, I didn't have, I don't really have anything to criticize. All of it's pretty damn good, right? What the dog do? Since you played the games, what's the biggest science type thing you'd want to change or adjust to make it more realistic? Uh, I mean, the radiation levels seem way too high to me. Oh, my legs! The radiation levels seem way too high ambiently to me, but then it wouldn't make a good gameplay mechanic because it wouldn't pressure the player at all. Right. Like, you wouldn't suddenly get radiation poisoning. Um... That's fine, that's how you make it exciting. What was better, the Fallout series, uh, TV series, or the MTG crossover? They nailed both of them. Ghouls. I can smell them from here. That smelly smell. That smelly smell that smells... smelly. Oh, there's so many! Oh, it's Walton Goggins! Good job, dog. Eat his throat. Ah, my arm. Ow. I, I basically exclusively cut off arms. The timing on blocking ghouls is so annoying. Oh, I, I stabbed my own dog. You, you don't need arms. You don't need them. Hey, hey, I would like to be your ghoul friend. Get the heck out of my face. Paladin, I'm never gonna dance again. Oh, gee, okay, geez, a little, little forward, aren't we? I don't like that guy. So, chat, a lot of, last time we played this game, a lot, I, I took a poll, and a lot of you said you sided with the Brotherhood of Steel. And I don't know why, because they kind of suck. Like, I know the Pridwin is cool. But they kind of suck, you know? I'll come back for you later, Dancy Boy. Kyle, how do you like the glasses? To be honest, they're kind of hurting my temples a little bit because my um, headphones are also on them, and so it's pressing into my temples a little bit, but, you know. Chompy thinks they look cool, so that's fine. Our institute guy, Kyle, says, Gabriel Guimarães Nogueira. Yes. I'm always, a, I'm always an institute guy because I, I believe truly... I truly believe that with the power of science, we can make people's lives better. You know? 
I truly believe that. And so even though they have some moral issues, you know, you know kind of, you know, my headcanon is that if I were to run the faci La Facilidad, or the Institute, rather, Freudian slip there, that I would make the correct decisions. I think there's a ghoul out here on the floating on the thingy. No, I think there's power armor right there. I think there's power armor in there or that guy. Yeah, yeah, there's power armor in there. In there. But there's bad guys. And we must discover. Which faction should we join, Kyle? I just started this. I don't know yet. I don't know. We haven't yet made our decision. I will put it up to chat for surely when we get to it. First, I want to discover Diamond Satay. Huh. Let me in. Wait, am I supposed to be killing Sadie? Because she has a name. Oh, she's dead. Wait, say, oh, this might be. Wait, am I supposed to be? Sorry, 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 sorry. This, this might be one of the, uh, this might be a new, uh, This might be a new mod quest that I added, but I'm aggroing her because I keep shooting her in the stomach. My bad. Let's run away from her. Run away from her so we de-aggro her. She, Sadie. Was I not supposed to? Damn you, mod. Wait. I've never seen that mod before. I don't know where this is. Damn it. Oh, okay. Thanks, modders. So I guess we go around. What's your opinion on Starfield, says Cy Mick. Uh, it was incredibly disappointing. I don't think we, uh, we played it for like two and a half hours on stream, and then I stopped, and I, un I uninstalled it. Super boring. You don't join... Faction, faction joins Kyle. Is this Tin Pan Alley? Something Alley? Some kind of alley? Wait, is Tin Pan Alley a Steve Ray Vaughn song? I think it is. We we'll go around the mod. That sounds bad. We go around. What's happening? We go around. Starfield's a mile wide and an inch deep. Yeah. Hangman Alley. Tin Pan Alley is the group that won a, wrote a bunch of jingles. Oh. What am I thinking? What? Who's there? Oh, God. I hear something. I'm just trying to get to Diamond City. I'm running. Uh, that's a big dog. Oh, oh, that's Diamond City Security. Take all of his crap. Now you're naked. <laughs> Help me. Just a second. I'm gonna put on your your dead naked friend's clothes. We got a lot of stuff to sell here, chat. You are now dressed as a member of the Diamond City. I'm not wearing guards umpire pants. Or am I? <laughs> Have you done any new Fallout Commander build that isn't a precon? Actually, no, on hell. I have um I have both the wise Mothman and Dogmeat commanders. Um I have the Dogmeat commander because I already had a, a Nazan equipment deck and just adding the color red just makes it like strictly better so i uh 
So that became, instead of a kitty deck, it became a doggo deck. A doggo, a doggo equi- you can't open the gate? A doggo Stop equipment dick. Around, Danny. I'm standing out in the open here for crying out loud. I got orders not to let you in, Miss Piper. You know, quick uh, fun fact chat, that is the same voice actor um, as Spider-Man from Spider-Man, the game. Oh, chat. Chat, I don't think my brain can do much more. Chat, I want you to spam your favorite emoji in the chat if you learn something today. If you learn something today, I want you to spam your favorite emoji in the chat right now. Chat, there is a lot of new people inside the facility today. I hope all of you who have been here, who are here for the very first time, enjoyed yourself. I know that I did. Um, always love educating and entertaining duck dive dip and dodging happy to have all the people here um to to sum up what a, 52 science times that might be an absolute record i'm sorry if i was a little incoherent today i'm not quite feeling myself not totally sure why but 52 science times is incredible i hope you learned something i hope you stick around at the facility as a professor or a member check out the latest episode on the main channel actually about fallout um, we have one of the nerdiest communities there is at the facility inside the private facility discord I hope to see you there I hope you learn something you can always continue on this conversation at patreon.com slash Kyle Hill support us and our nerdy mission I would very much appreciate it I know I got some things wrong today if I got some things wrong put them in the comments after the stream is over keep me honest chat And we will continue on our nerdy mission in Fallout, perhaps even tomorrow or the next day. But then I have to go to Vegas and then I have to go to the Ren Fair. But I'm happy to see everyone here. How do I join the Discord? Says Omni. That's patreon.com slash Kyle Hill. Support us at the appropriate level and the blast doors will open for you, chat. Um, I hope to see you for the next one. We'll definitely, if it's not later uh, this week, then it will definitely be next week for the, we will check out the next gen update to see exactly what's in store for us back in the wasteland. And chat, as I always say, my professors know, no matter where I see you next time, next live stream, in the Discord, in some sort of newsletter that I don't even have, on the main channel in the comments. I do read them. Till then, be nice to each other. Hope you learned something today. Share it with someone that you love. Because why not? Or just yell it at someone on the street. Hey, Komodo dragons have bone armor. What? Who cares? Until I see you next time, wherever that is, be nice to each other because this is all we got. I'll see you soon.